Um, I just skated with Freddie DeSoto, Eric Dressen, Lance Mountain, um, Howard Hood, right now at Harbor City, just left there. So I was rolling around, having a good time, and now I'm dropping off my kid in Sunset Beach, Seal Beach area. Yeah. And so I've been driving and listening, and the stories have been amazing. You know, just to hear some of those stories are just uh, – it really does put things into perspective, you know what I mean? The history of skateboarding, and I appreciate that from all of you guys. Because, you know, I was a little guy, just 10 years old, you know what I mean? And just looking at the mags at six, seven, you know, before Marina or, or, or I went to a skate park and to, you know, actually finally go and be right in the midst of everyone and just be at the right place at the right time. I tell you, it's... It, I, I said it today. I was like, I can't believe I grew up to Freddie DeSoto. I was where I was at the right time. You know what I mean? And my dad was such a huge supporter of his kid. Now I know because I'm like taking my kids everywhere. So I kind of understand how he had full joy in it. But I, I went to Marina. It's a quick story. I tell it all the time. So it'll be quick. I, go to Marina and I wanted to go every like weekend. My pops is like, you know what? All right. Five bucks every two hours. You want to go all day, 10 bucks all day. Next thing you know, I want to go every day. He's like, you know what? I can't, I can't spend all this money. He's like, you know what? Let me see if I could work here. He ends up becoming the manager of Marina Del Rey skate park, literally like the first year it opened. And this is 79. And so I'm sitting there hanging out with Jay Adams, Shogo, Polar Bear, George Wilson, Mark <laughs> Ryan, the list goes on on people that I'm hanging out with in the baby bowls, right? In the in the brown bowls. Yeah, and, brown bowls. And Jay goes like this, you know what? You need a board. And I was like, because I was, I think I was riding a Bob Biniak, worn down tail, you know, because I went from a PC Constantino to a Jim Red Dog Muir. Then I went to a a Bobby Bullet, you know, Biniac, and I was, you know, still, like, learning how to skate in the Little Bulls. And then Jay's like, dude, you're coming to Z right now. We go to Z, I get the full Z setup. And the reason why I'm talking about it, because Fulmer, me and Fulmer have been hanging out for the past couple of days in my stores going through all my stuff, and we found some photos of me in the Brown Bulls on that Z board just, it was yesterday. Sick. And, and... He takes me there. I get the full setup. Next thing you know, I get that photo in uh, Skateboarder Magazine doing the frontside ollie. I still can't even That's ride the deep bowls yet. And I'm riding a George <laughs> Wilson with tall mini cubic wheels. I got the, you know, the, the uh, George, George Wilson side cut model. And now I think it was Ray Bones came to the park. And he's like, hey, bro. You need to you need to ride for pal. <laughs> I'm like I'm like sick. I'm like, Stacy. I'm like sick. All right, that sounds amazing, right? And Stacy comes up and he's like, "You want to ride for pal?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'd love to ride for pal." Boom! I'm on Bones Brigade. Gold Cup Series comes up. I'm I now well basically I learned how to skate for a couple months before that, and and basically went down to Del Mar, won a contest. And now here comes the Gold Cup. I'm riding for Powell Gold Cup. Each Gold Cup, I went from 28th place to 9th place to 6th place to 1st place at Marina. Wow. And I was 12. And yeah. I went, Stacy, wow. I want to turn pro. Stacy's like, no, you're not going to turn pro now. I'm like, I want to turn pro right now. <laughs> He's like, Chris, you can't turn pro right now. I'm like, I want to turn pro young, like right now. Like the next Gold Cup, you know, at, at Upland was the last one. I want to be pro. He's like, no, I go, I quit because I talked to Dogtown. Dogtown was like, Christian, you need to ride for us. And I was like, will you give me a pro model? They're like, yep. So Denise Barter, Fred Blood, Mike Smith, I think it was like Gator and Tony Hawk. They were all on on Dogtown. I quit, Powell. I enter the, the last, um, I think it was the Gold Cup series, riding for Dogtown. And then they went out of business. Boom, bankrupt, wow. died. Oh, and and Stacy was like, I was like, when will you turn me pro, Stacy? He's like, two years. I was like, really? 
So I'm definitely not waiting. So I quit. And now I go, I'm on Dogtown. That goes under. I'm like, man, I go to Winchester. I'm riding like, I think it was a Dwayne Peters board one time, a Tracker 777 board for a minute. And then I see Brad Bowman and Bowman, you know, obviously style master, one of my favorite skaters. He's like, Christian, you should ride for Sims. And I was like, Sims would be sick. He's like, you need to go see Tom Sims in Santa Barbara. I'm like, I can't believe it. I went from Stacy Peralta to Dogtown, my dream company, to now Tom Sims, Pure Juice, Taper Kick, Doug DeMont, Moran. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like no way. Like, this is like when I was seven looking at the mags drooling over this stuff. And I'm like, this is insane. No way. And Brad's like, yeah, go up there. I went up there, me and my dad. He's like, yeah, Christian give you a model it'll be amazing you're, you're you're an amazing skateboarder and then i leave i i come back i think i'm like okay let's work on the model and he's like hey i just you know, gave the license to brad dorfman i was like what happened he's like yeah i gave them to brad dorfman and he does mad rats. his sister does mad rats and i was like man i just can't catch a break here i was like now i gotta go meet somebody else He's like, yep, go meet him. He's out there in Costa Mesa. I go to Costa Mesa. Brad's like, yeah, I got the brand. You know what? We're going to turn you pro. And I'm like, is this really going to happen? And then, boom, he has me rising sun board. And so I turned pro for Sims. And it wow. took two years. <laughs> so I turned pro at like 14. And a lot of and- stuff. And I and I tell you, it it was it was pretty cool to have gone from each such such legendary leaders in our sport, people I admired, people who I respected, and as a kid, some as peers, and even Alva. You know, before I wrote for um, Powell, I discovered Alva Lightroom or something like that too. And so just being around all these guys and to finally get my pro model. And then the graphic was so iconic. You know what I mean? It's pretty, it's a shame, you know, that I can't represent that graphic because it's a war crime flag now. And, and I just can't do it. Everyone hates on me for it. It's like the swastika, but until like about 10 years ago, no one cared and everyone was fine with it until the internet happened and, now everyone polices it, and I can't do anything with a rising sun. Wow. I mean, I post. That, that, I post that's an interesting. You know, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. How's this? I got one for that that graphic. I was writing for a Penny. Did a did a rising sun Penny board, and they were so popular at the time. About ten years. This is how I ended up getting like hammered for it. They sent a whole bunch of those boards to Korea. And it ended up landing there on their Independence Day. (laughs) And they they sent them all back, and they hated me. They hated, you know, Penny, that they would do that. And then next, you know, all my Korean friends are like, yeah, Christian, all my Korean friends are all telling me, Christian, you know, he supports that. And he's fighting for, for me because it doesn't represent that for us. And I'm like, I just found out about that. I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was a war crime flag until, I mean, I, I grew up in Koreatown, right in LA, hanging out with the Korean killers, the leaders of the gang, they're riding my rising sun boards in Koreatown, all over the place, and no one knew anything, because there was no, you know, history being told through the internet, and people, you know, really, you know, kind of keeping everyone in check. So that's kind of like a back, back uh, history of the the rising sun, but well, they're all trying, I had to a be, good they're trying to be politically correct. And that, 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 yeah. that you know, Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. I don't, Dr. I Kubo used to wear it. That's right. Yeah, he, he was my like mentor it. and he was my favorite. He Absolutely. took yeah. me under his wing and I wanted to be just like him. And I did his tricks and you know, and I did it, you know, and I wanted his graphics and you know, it, it was, uh, I mean, it was I can't tell you. I pinch myself all the time and just go, "How did I get to hang out with these, like the most incredible skateboarders 
of all time. You know what I mean? By keeping yourself and, humble. And, By keeping yourself humble. And, and then you became one, Christian. You became one of the most legendary skateboarders of all time. And I'm yeah, proud to have known you and, and have seen you, that little long-haired boy in the brown bowls kicking ass. And I'm like, who is that girl? And then I'm like, oh my God, it's a guy. And then he turned into, he turned into the guy that was ready to take down Tony Hawk and did take him down quite a few times and oh. kicked his ass in style every single time. Well, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make my mentors proud, you know what I mean? And it was about surfing. Let me just go back to surfing because surfing is why I skated. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the opposite way around. It That's was, I wanted skated. to skateboard because I wanted to be a pro surfer. And I went, you know what? The water's freezing. The waves suck here in California. And you got to get up too early. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just shred on a skateboard and surf on land. And, and in, in my head, when I skateboard, I just think that it's a wave. And so for me, that's the school I came from. And it, it was all about style. You know what I mean? Surfing is all about style. It's about grace. It's about Jerry Lopez. It's about Larry Burl. It's about buttons. You know what I mean? And, and to me, like that skateboarding to me. You know what I mean? I, I, I mean, tricks are amazing and technical, you know, skateboarding is incredible. But when you watch someone stylish like Wally in a way, just carve the bowl with this utmost like authority, grace and power, it blows any trick out the water. You know what I mean? Skating with, you know, uh, watching pineapple just carve. You know what I mean? Like, even today, when you just watch, you know, guys like that, like today I was watching Freddie DeSoto just do a frontside carve and, uh, and grinding the shell. And I was like, how beautiful is that when another kid is like doing big disasters, locking up and all like jerky. And I'm like, man, that is just hard to watch. It's you know what I mean? It's rad. Watch, it's rad. But I just come from a place mm -hmm. where, you know, Doug DeMont Marance, Brad Bowman. You know, let's just talk about Sims real quick. It's you know about what I mean? the flow. It's about that, the flow, bro. Even Fulmer. Ooh. Even Fulmer. Fulmer, I don't know if he's on here, but he was a style guy. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? He had style. And, and you know, for me to be a part of this, because it's about Sims, to be a part of that history, to be a part of even knowing, I got to meet Tom Sims in his office and hang out with him and, you know, that alone was like part of, you know, my, what I can tell stories about. It's and a, to me, fond, that. Your fond memories. So uh oh. We lost Christian. We lost. He's, in the, he's in a car, uh, man. Well, That's real so quick, real, here's a story that um, when I'd go up to Sims and, uh, you know, I'd go in the office and, you know, I think one time up there, he's like, because I.